I'm in the garage now where the laser is and I've got the MDF down. I'll cut the MDF first. I've brought the MDF drawing over on the laptop. So all we need to do is fire the job up and this should take three or four minutes. It'll begin with the engrave and it'll start drawing out the positions for the, um, the buttons, the blue lines that they are on the diagram here. So it's doing this engrave, then it'll do the blue buttons and then finally it'll finish off cutting the holes. This job should take about just over two and a half minutes. Now it's making the holes. It's cutting the round hole for the LED and the square hole for the button. Never gets old watching this. And I tend to do the, uh, the MDF backing first, do the whole batch in one go. And then I've got actual size pieces for the uh, fascias, which I can mark against. Now at the moment, the laser bed is set. So it's got the, the square, the honeycomb type grill and the wood sitting on that, which is great for cutting. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll change the, uh, the base. Yeah, it's cutting it out now. I'll change the base for the, um, the plastic, the, uh, the fascia. And we'll prep that job up and then we can leave that running and that, as I say that will run for two times one hour ten minutes so a total of two hours twenty minutes and we have to paint it let it dry customers should be very happy because they've got a panel ahead of schedule because I used it for this video as I was looking for a nice simple panel to uh, to demonstrate on All the smoke is being sucked out. And I'll be my usual impatient self and lift the lid straight away rather than giving it time to uh, disappear. I want to get, want to get in there. Oh, tea's ready. Thank you very much. Ah, oh, thanks. Best drink of the day. I'm being fed as well. All the chocolate bars are available. Okay, let's see what we got. Woohoo! Here's our MDF. Ah, I love the smell of burning wood. So here's the panel. And I'll... Uh, poke the holes out and here's the MDF piece ready to go it's got all the holes in it you can see right through it and it's put that through nicely marked ready to go in fact is it easier to see here you can see where the button holes have been marked get a clean hole ready to go so I've put the uh, the lid on the bed turn the vacuum bed on I've fitted the um, the fascia and what we need to do is just check my focus the vacuum on final test and we can start the job laser enable start and there we go right I'll bring the camera forward you can have a look Well, I've just caught up with today's post and now I can start my uh, real job. So back to this panel. Uh, this is what came off the laser. 
that's how they look unpainted. So we have the fascia and you can see through it both sides and then we have the MDF backing with the etchings for the buttons and the holes for the actual um, LEDs. So what I'm going to do now is paint this panel. This is all black so I don't need a key. I hope I don't need a key. This was supposed to be a fairly quick end-to-end -end video on making a panel but it's taken so long, I think I've spent four and a half hours just filming it, that um, I'll probably end up splitting it into two halves. I've come out to the post room to do this because it's the quiet part of the house, a little man cave, as my wife likes to call it. And it's quite peaceful here and I can calm down a bit. I've got a buzzard flying around the front of the house, so I was out with the camera. Got that on film. It's it's in the front every single day and all day long. So there must be good hunting in the uh, in the field there. Every now and then you'll see it on the ground. So it must be devouring something. Makes a nice change every time I run in and out of of here. I can see it. The reason I picked this panel to show you is it was uh, it's a small one, A4, and it's uh, relatively simple, straightforward, so I didn't have to get hung up in some detail. Some of the panels is quite a lot of detail and they take forever to resolve. This is probably the nearest thing I get to therapy. And that'll be the phone. That's my manager. Mega Points Controllers, how may I direct your call? Hi, it's me. Hello. Do you want me to bring the box to the garage? That, that would, yes, please, if you could bring them over. Are oh, they all packaged all right. now? Are they ready to go? Okay. And, any yes please i would love a cuppa thank you right. bye. bye that's my manager manager sheila oh she's the best not only is she uh, been packing product this morning but she's going to deliver it with a cup of tea oh it doesn't get any better does it so i've worked the whole weekend again. And this is one of the products of that work. Right behind it I have another few panels to get straight on with but I think you've seen that process. The problem with us being not a massive company i.e. there's just a few of us is I can only do one thing at a time then my wife will go to great lengths to explain I do one thing at a time badly and she can multitask. I think that's, that's something to do with her uh, X and Y chromosomes. Being a bloke, apparently I have no chance. <laughs> but I like to try and see one thing through end to end. Got a FedEx parcel there as well, customer in America. There's quite a few going to the States, Canada and Australia today. Um, customer in America wants FedEx, so he's paid the extra. He'll probably have it Wednesday or Thursday. It's Monday today. It's not, get, not due to be picked up till tomorrow, that. The rest go Royal Mail. I find Royal Mail works fine. It's just sometimes a bit slow on international and that's hardly their fault. Once they've handed it over to an airline, there's not much they can do. Unless you own the airline in the case of FedEx and DHL and the real proper couriers, as I call them. I think if I was a pilot flying planes, I'd rather fly freight than people. Probably more interesting, I don't know. Certainly the freight tends not to complain as much. 
mind you these days I think the uh, the cockpit just locked the door anyway I had to make my logo extra small there just to fit it in because every corner is used on this I've taken quite a lot of material out of this panel for its size and if you take a lot it can lead to horrible consequences so you've got to be careful it's a bit like when you're I suppose when you're engraving it or gauging bits out gouging bits out you're wounding it aren't you uh, nobody likes a wounded panel of course so you've got to be you've got to do it just right um, if I'm taking a lot of material out in a tight space I tend to reduce the depth of the engrave but when you reduce the depth of the engrave the colors don't come out so well because they are there's more absorbed by the, the plastic in front of it If you get the balance right then the panel looks good and everyone's happy and I think this panel looks good and I think I hope the customer's going to be happy so it spent two two and a quarter two and a half hours on the laser yesterday this panel and uh, I washed it off dried it off and today it gets its paint and this afternoon when it's dry we can have a look at it and I'll do a side by side comparison of what the customer asked for what we sent as artwork for approval and then the finished panel and you can be the judge of whether we did a good job or not now if she's making tea then it could take a while because I've explained the importance of putting the water on the tea bag but not stirring it and leaving it for a proper five minutes to brew. Can't be having the tea stirred. It rushes it and alters the taste. These things are so important, don't you agree? I'll tell you what, when I opened up in here this morning a few hours ago, the sun was belting in. It was a glorious cold but glorious. It's nice, I have a beautiful view of fields. Can't wait to walk all around there again with my granddaughter. Go down the field to the bottom and there's uh, small woods. And last year when she was one and a half we traipsed all around there. I can't wait to do it again. Now she's two, she was two the other day. Woohoo! Happy birthday Nancy! And um, she loves a car set and I also got the uh, the N-Gage train out with the Kato track and we put that on the lounge table and she had a really good play with that. Good job we do childcare for her isn't it? But uh, she really enjoyed that. And she could count them. And the sounds coming out were just fantastic. All these noises, sound is great. And she's, uh, I got her a Hot Wheels car track for her birthday. So it's got a little motor and it basically ejects what I used to know as a kid as matchbox cars, they're Hot Wheels now, around this track fast. And she's pretty good at dropping them on and putting a second and a third one on and they're shooting around this track like nutters on a racetrack. She's got the timing right so she can drop one on just after the first one's gone. Not bad for a two year old, if I say so myself. She does like trains though. But the only show we went to where she was old enough to actually see stuff was Stafford last year. So she'd have been one, just one. And she was fascinated by all the lights going around on these layouts. Some of the demo layouts were, had lots of flashing lights from the traders were brilliant. I remember sitting there with her for ages, getting a numb knee, trying to hold her up and we were just watching trains go round. 
Oh, brilliant. Can't wait to take it to some more. I wonder when the next show will be. We're booked in for um, the NEC, Worley, and Milton Keynes Great Electric Train Show so far this year. Whether they happen, I don't know. If you have to wear a mask, then as far as I'm concerned, it's not safe and I won't be attending. Um, if there's no requirement to wear a mask, then obviously the organisers think, and the government maybe, think it's safe and we shall attend. And that's our criteria. If we can attend as normal, brilliant. If we have to take any special precautions, then it ain't safe and we ain't going. And I'm just fortunate that I can keep busy. Here's our tea. Let's go and check on that. Are you going to give me the tea? Thank you. Come in. No. Okay. Tea's nice. Okay, thanks. You can just leave them there. Yay, more product. Thank you. Are you able to pull the door down? Cheese toasted for lunch. Oh, excellent. What time? 12.30. Okay, and what time is it now? Okay, see you in an hour. Cheese toasty, yeah. And I'm back in the room. Oops. That's a nice cup. She's getting the anger this now. Not bad for 30 years of marriage. I'm so glad she doesn't watch my videos. <laughs> or does she? Nah, she won't watch this. Be like watching paint dry, won't it? I quote, I think I've mentioned this on the previous video, I quote, six to eight weeks to make a panel. This was made in less than six days, start to finish. But it's, uh, it just happened to be the right panel at the right time for what I wanted. Have you seen those? Um, we do a switch box, or we did a switch box for the servo controller. It's a fully wired box with 12 toggle switches on it. All, just plug it in and go. And we made, I don't know, 50 of them, and they're very time consuming, take a lot of work. And um, they've literally all gone in the last couple of weeks, and we don't have any now. So I'm gonna revisit that design and uh, see if I can improve it a bit. And I thought that might make a, an interesting video, seeing one of those put to get, get put together. They do take forever though, they are labor intensive. Um, the biggest part, of course, is um, getting, uh, putting the box together and then manually wiring up and soldering all the servos. It's a cracking project to do yourself, but if we're trying to make them an uh, assembly line, it's, it's all manual labour. And it does take a while. And that's a, a, a job my daughter used to like doing. I sort of stick her with a load of parts in a room and say, let me know when they're done and I think two or three or four days later she'd come out with a few and of course it'd be how long how many is that all I'm a slave driver this microphone's particularly annoying me again today the um, furry thing on it keeps falling off how are they looking I think they're okay right Let's finish those off at the top. Try and keep my sleeve out. Uh, yeah.
Who'd have thought? It's getting there. All right. Ooh, let's have another slurp. My daughter bought me a clock for Christmas on the wall up there. I've yet to put a battery in it. So it's only right twice a day at the moment. I received the newsletter yesterday from the Macclesfield Model Railway Group. It's a good read. You should um, go onto the website and get yourself a copy, so sign up to it. They do a newsletter um, every month and it's absolutely full of stuff, photos. And um, Mike, who spends forever putting it together, I think it's a lot of effort. Um, he does it for the love of, love of the hobby and it really is a, a good read. So go on to the Macclesfield Model Railway Group website and sign up for the newsletter. I think he's got a few hundred readers and it's just, and there's competitions as well and funny photos and things like that. It's definitely worth a look at. Great club. If you're, uh, if you're looking to join and you're in the Macclesfield area, in Manchester, South Manchester, they'd be an excellent place to go they're very welcoming but at the moment of course nobody's welcoming anything so virtual groups and newsletters it is and of course uh, YouTube to keep us going I've been meaning to do a blog for ages I've just been lazy getting started I suppose just, it's easy to be too busy to do something but what do you do when you are it's like this video now it's I've put nearly five hours of recording into it and when you've got multiple angles you know a screen recording and a camera from in 4k it takes a lot of processing as well so my poor PC grinds like mad even though the uh, the graphics card does all the encoding in hardware it still takes a while and it's a monster PC I bought it for me flight simulators I quite like flight simming. I like quite like doing the train simulators on it as well. Um, it's far more to it than I thought. But I quite like. I'm at the moment. I'm flying. I'm, I'm, I'm playing with the Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. And whilst the simulator, I would say, is more more like a game than a simulator at the moment, because a lot of the features aren't there in the core sim, like VNAV and so on. It's uh, I fly the uh, the working title CJ4, which is a an open source sort of collective. And they've modified the Cessna Citation CJ4, which is a twin engine business jet, and they've um, they've got all the autopilot features working for that. So it's got uh, vertical navigation working, and also. Um, I think they've tweaked the approach now as well, so that runs locally. It's the aircraft that runs it rather than the sim. It's absolutely superb. I did a flight yesterday from Boston to JFK in New York, and it was a 40-minute flight, but wow, it was fab because it's such a piece of heavily used airspace. It's full of restrictions. I quite enjoy that. Leaving with the SID, the standard instrument departure, and coming in on the start is great. Try not to bust the speed limit or all the other rules that they have. It's fantastic. A little bit there. Where did that go? There. Now that aircraft has a 2,000 mile range. So for me to cross the Atlantic, I went from Last week I went from Liverpool up to Reykjavik in Iceland and then through to, I don't know, somewhere in the northeast of Canada. And now I've made it down to Boston and JFK in New York. Flown it down to the Falkland Islands as well. None of this, where do you want to start from and go? No, I only fly from where I land from. So um, I think I'm going to plan a trip to Hawaii see if I can get there I think I can there's got to be some little island I can stop at if I need to mind you I think in the case of Hawaii there isn't but 
I'll try and try and get there and then keep going to Polynesia and into Australia and then I can do uh, Asia oh, I think that's quite nice if I say so myself it's still transparent at the moment because I've got nothing behind it but we'll, we'll let that dry and we'll do a comparison so join me in a few minutes where I will miraculously be in another location and we can do the before, during and after stuff. So if we look at the journey of the panel, we began with the customer's artwork, which was a photograph of their, their layout. We drew it, uh, this is the PDF we sent for the customer to, for the uh, final approval. And then we actually made the panel itself. And I hope you'll agree, it's um, spot on. It's exactly what we drew. So the customer's got exactly what they're expecting. And the panel uh, forms two parts. We've got the fascia, which is painted and clear, and that's left off until you mount this. And this is the piece, the MDF backing, where you'll attach the LEDs and buttons. So you'll put the buttons and lights on this. And then when it's ready and working, you'll just drop this on and it'll go into the enclosure of the box um, and provide hopefully years and years of service. Let's bring this up and let you have a look. See if we can get it to focus. So I hope you'll agree, um, it looks rather smart. And now I've finished this video, I can get on with some others. This is the next guy. I've got this one to do. I've got to get these done this week or drawn and then I can move on to the the rest of the backlog. So I hope you've enjoyed this particular blog entry. It's gone on a bit. I think it's been probably cut over two videos and gives you some insight into what goes into making a mimic panel. Basically it's all labour and that's where the cost comes from. Uh, the machinery helps but uh, there's no press go and squirt a panel out. Everyone is bespoke and different and uh, I guess that's the beauty of it as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next blog entry.